look at the fields. Stay away from the forest. Serve our safe. It's been a while since I've covered anything analog horror related, but when I came across Surreal Broadcast, the topic of tonight's video, I couldn't bear to stand idly by and wait for someone else to cover it. My favorite type of analog horror is the new station VHS type. If you're a fan of Local 58 or Gemini Home Entertainment, then do be sure to stick around. Surreal Broadcast is a compilation of tapes that tells a story about a small town named Berksaw that's being haunted by beasts living in the restricted zone of its forest. Or that's what it seems to be at the moment. The series is currently split into three seasons, so there's a whole lot of content to cover. I ask that if you enjoy this video then do make sure to subscribe, as it's a free way to support my channel. But without further ado, Let's dive into the mysterious story that is Surreal Broadcast. The very first video of Surreal Broadcast, titled Arrhenii, takes place in 1991 as a school project made by Stephanie Newman. At first, it seems to be a simple presentation on arachnids, detailing their habitats, size, and diet. Nothing seems out of the ordinary until a certain phrase comes on screen. See if you can figure out which one seems a bit off. While describing the length of the average spider, the presentation mentions that it was believed that the tarantulas were the biggest. This threw me off the first time I watched Arrhenii since it implies that there's something bigger than tarantulas. Of course, in our world, tarantulas are the biggest family of spiders, so what could be bigger than them is currently unknown to us. It appears that whatever the thing is that's living in Berksaw Forest is the new largest family of spiders, as they are said to vary from 1 to 3 meters, or 3.3 to 9.8 feet. They are black with orange stripes and seem to have no apparent features, although we will very soon learn that that's false. As for the last part that says, In case you have been bitten, going to the hospital is useless. Isolate yourself in a room with any flammable liquid and a lighter, and let it burn. This could be interpreted in multiple ways. The first is that maybe cauterizing the wound can heal the spider bite, 
and the second is that maybe you would be better burning to death than suffering the consequences of the spider bite. For now, I can't say which one of those is the right interpretation, but I'm more inclined to believe that the second theory is true, and I'll explain why later, but for now just keep that thought in the back of your head. Radio Made in 1987 by a WXVC radio station, gives us a brief introduction on how radios work before switching to something... darker. But before we watch any further, the reason I believe radio waves were explained at the beginning of this video is because in Aranei, the spiders of Berksaw were mentioned to produce certain audio frequencies that can cause audio and visual hallucinations which I think will properly explain the second half of this video. Have a look. In some unknown year, presumably before 1987 since that's when this video was made, an unknown frequency was bouncing around Berksaw that caused paranoia and anxiety, which seems to have been made by the spiders since they too produce strange frequencies with similar anomalous properties. What we learn from this video is that these spiders can override TV and radio stations with their own frequencies and use them as a way to extend their anomalous effects. It also seems that the spiders are smart enough to communicate with humans, as the writing on the TV is in English. Judging by the text on the TV, it appears that we've somehow wronged the spiders, although for now that's unclear.
taking place in 1989, the video Unusual Tour Guide gives us a little bit of knowledge about the town of Berksaw through a travel guide produced by some prize tourism company. In part one, accommodations, we learned that hotel stairs are, quote, both not supposed to leave the building after 12 a.m. and not supposed to turn the TV on after 12 a.m. Knowing that the spiders of Berksaw hunt at nighttime and have the ability to hijack TV stations, it's fairly obvious that the spiders are the reason these rules are in place. This also points out that the whole spider ordeal is no secret. Everyone knows about it, and while travelers aren't told specifically about the spiders, they're told how to avoid them. Enter part two, pathways. Part 2 explains that Berksaw's forest is split into two areas, divided by a pathway. The west side is where tourism is encouraged, but the east side, just a pathway's width away, must be where the spiders are located since it's a restricted zone. Before part 3 is able to start, footage from two years later in 1991 cuts in and shows someone who is presumably in the forest, before cutting back to part 3. And just like last time, footage cuts in from the very same person, only this time, it's a few hours later and they are looking at the aforementioned observation tower, with a strange purple light emanating from the center. Cutting back to part 4, we learn that The east side of the Berksaw forest is currently closed due to dangerous animals such as bears and snakes and dangerous flora. Although we know why it's really closed. So it does seem that the travel agencies want tourists to be safe, but don't want to inform them of the spiders, possibly out of fear that Berksaw will lose visitors. At the end of the video, we are warned by the tape that if we see eyes in the distance, it's already too late for us. This is exactly what we see from the interruption as the clock strikes 12. 
I mentioned earlier that I found it strange how no special attributes were mentioned about the spiders in Arrhenii. Well, in reality, these spiders have three eyes instead of the usual eight. This specific attribute will be our primary way of identifying these spiders in the future. Tales of Burkeslaw from 1988 is brought to us by a Leica home video in order to give us a bit of history about the area. Interestingly enough, according to the video's description, there is no company registered as Leica home video, which makes me wonder if they really did collaborate with Burkeslaw Forest Community School, or maybe they're faking that too. Anyways, we're given a bit of information concerning the founding of Burkeslaw. Something that immediately caught my attention was the fact that the founding years are 1880 to 1921. Normally an area's founding will only be marked by a specific year, not 39 different years. For our purposes, 1880 will be the year that Berksall was founded, and 1921 was the year that something very important happened. In story number one, we learn about a child named Jimmy who has wandered off into the forest even though he knows that a storm is coming. Why exactly his parents don't want him to be out in the storm could be attributed to the normal landslides, lightning strikes, and flash floods, or it could possibly be that the storms are somehow linked with spiders. At the end of story one, Jimmy finds a strange hole and is subsequently greeted with three glowing eyes emanating from beneath the ground, signaling that Jimmy has stumbled into a place that he shouldn't be and we can only assume the worst happens to him. Keep this hole in mind, as it actually ties in with what happened in 1921, which will be explained later on in the tales of Burksaw. In story 2, we switch over to the perspective of the Berksaw Community School, where a teacher and their class are stuck inside during the storm. The teacher tells the students not to turn on the TV in order to not potentially transmit the spider's anomalous frequencies, but one of these students ignorantly turns it on, and the rest unfolds.
In story number three, we learn about what happened in 1921. A comet fell down to Earth, emitting a powerful green light, and inside it was, quote, the devil's own daughter, which appears to have many eyes, opposed to just having three. Piecing together all that we know, the year 1921 is important because it marks the beginning of the spider's arrival in Berksaw. The hole that Jimmy stumbled upon could possibly be the hole left behind by the comet which now acts as a nesting place for these spiders. Considering that the being inside the comet was called a daughter, I believe that this is the queen spider and the one responsible for hatching all these spiders into the Berksaw forest. Our final video is a broadcast once again brought to us by WXVC, notably at 11.54pm. Nothing seems out of the ordinary until an emergency alert pops up. We are notified that a patient in the hospital was bitten by an unknown animal over an hour earlier and is experiencing shaking and hallucinations, both symptoms caused by the anomalous spiders, so I think it's safe to assume that this patient was bitten by one of the spiders. As gunshots ring throughout Berksaw, a blue warning quickly evolves into a purple warning, and civilians are advised to stay indoors as police are given the authority to kill on sight. This immediately seems a bit odd to me, because why would police kill humans and not the spiders? Well, going back to what we know about the symptoms told to us by the emergency alert, abnormalities in the eyes are one of them. And since eyes are a heavy symbol of the spiders, this could indicate that a bite from one of them leads to some level of mind control or infection. This may seem like a bit of a stretch, but it would tie up a few loose ends. Going back to the very start of Season 1, we are instructed to light ourselves on fire if bitten by a spider as opposed to any other way of handling the situation. This could possibly be because we need to render our bodies fully useless to the spider's mind control something that a simple gunshot won't do. The gunshots caught on camera from the night of the incident could be from the patient who's gone rogue due to mind control, attacking other civilians, which also explains why police are authorized to kill civilians on sight. They could be trying to take out anyone they suspect is infected.
At the end of the video, we get a message from the hospital describing the situation, followed by a chilling image of what's coming from the fields. I do think it's a bit odd that the hospital says our savior is angry, implying that these spiders are some sort of gods. But the fact that the word savior is singular makes me think it's referring to one special spider, aka the queen or daughter of the devil. Although she arrived on Earth in 1921 and this takes place in 1989, I wouldn't be surprised if these alien spiders had longer than average lifespans. Who would have thought that the little town of Berksaw had a mysterious spider infestation that they were trying to keep secret from the outside world? An infestation that, judging by the final image of Season 1, could evolve into something far deadlier than it already is. That about ties up everything I wanted to say about Season 1. If you're interested in this series, then be sure to stick around as I will hopefully be covering Season 2 soon. As always, thank you for watching, and good night.